Hey, Dr. B here, and let's talk about energy and water. Let's imagine we're going to heat up some water and determine how much energy is required. That's fine. I guess it would be a function of its specific heat, which is super high, but maybe it's not so simple. On account of water, it can be solid, liquid, or gas. So let's incorporate those phase changes as well. Here we have the standard enthalpies of vaporization and fusion for water. Funny terms, but this one's okay, right? This means how much energy it takes to convert water from a liquid to a gas. And there it is. It's 2,260 joules for every gram. Now we're not just talking about getting it to boil. We're talking about literally having grams of it turn from a liquid to a gas. Enthalpy of fusion is an unfortunate term. It doesn't sound at all like melting to me, but that's the term they use. And that takes less, 334 joules per gram. Let's make sure we get our signs right. If we're heating things up, that's putting energy in. That's positive, right? That's endothermic. So the enthalpy of fusion of water is a positive 334 joules per gram, also positive for boiling. So if we're going downhill, the opposite must be true. As you cool things off, they're releasing heat. That's exothermic. You could warm your hands by that heat released. The same must be true when phases change. Now, in the purest sense, phase change is isothermal. It happens at exactly the boiling point or the freezing point of water. So when water condenses, its enthalpy of condensation is 2,260 joules per gram in the exothermic direction, releasing heat. Similarly, to solidify water, notice these four funky little terms that you just got to use. That's minus 334 joules per gram. Okay, fine, let's apply that. Let's say you've got a mole of water, 18 grams, and we're going to zip it up from minus 20. That's cold ice. Yes, ice can go below zero Celsius. All the way up to 110. Yes, steam can be heated further. Okay, I see this as being five steps. Right in the, in the beginning, we're at cold ice. We got to bring that up to ice at zero, at which point it will melt. We got to take that liquid water and then bring it from zero to 100, at which point it will boil. And we got to bring that steam up another 10 degrees. So we got five steps. Whenever we have a temperature change, we'll use Q equals MC delta T. Whenever we have a phase change, we'll use the enthalpy of fusion, vaporization, etc. Okay. First, it's Q equals MC delta T. We have water going from minus 20, I should say solid water, going from minus 20 to zero. Our M for every one of these equ uh, equations will be 18 grams. Specific heat of water, you'd think will always be 4.184, but watch out because we're dealing with solid water here. That's ice, so that's 2.03 joules per gram degrees Celsius. A good scientist should throw those units in, but there's just too many steps here for me to bother, so forgive me. And 20 degrees of temperature change should do it. And so we're looking at 731 joules to get it to the point where it will melt. Now look at your enthalpies of fusion, etc. And to melt it requires 334 joules per gram. And we got 18 grams. Grams cancels and we get 6,012 joules. All right, time to heat it up to its boiling point, all the way from 0 to 100 degrees. That 18 grams that has a specific heat of normal liquid water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, has to go up the entire 100 degrees Celsius. And that's not surprisingly the big kingpin of energy units so far, 7,524 joules. It is ready to boil. Don't put your hand in. It's 100 degrees. Now it takes 2,260 joules for every gram, and we have our 18 grams. So that's 40,000. That is by far the biggest contributor. But we're not done. It is now steam, but we are going to heat it 10 degrees further. Uh, that would be Q equals MC delta T. It's still 18 grams in the gaseous form. Its specific heat is low again. It's 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius, and we decide to go 10 degrees hotter. So that's 3,618 joules. Whip out your TI-83 calculators and punch that in, and you'll see that we're looking at about 58 kilojoules. But what is that? Is that a lot of energy? Is that a little energy? I like to convert to nutritional calories. I believe 4,184 joules are uh, nutritional calories, so we're going to divide it by that much. And it turns out 
And there it is mathematically, by the way. Always convince yourself that makes sense. Mathematically, joules is gone. It's only 14 nutritional calories. That's about the amount of heat you'd be dealing with if you burnt a couple of potato chips, for example, right? And so if you took a couple of potato chips and stuck them all under a beaker of water that's, you know, 18 grams, it should boil it if you had 100% efficiency. Okay, that's energy and water.